Hello, so welcome to episode four of my foundation series. Today we're going to be doing a buy or beware on the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. So this has a really long name to it, um, but it is a drugstore foundation because it's from Revlon and it's one of their newer products that they've released. I think they released this over the summer, if not the spring. So I've had it for a while and I've been trying it for a while and these are my thoughts. So before I show you guys the application and wear test, we'll talk about this foundation a little bit. So one, like I said, it is from the drugstore. It's from Revlon and it's from their new Candid collection and they have concealers and powders and all that kind of stuff. Depending on where you're buying this from, it can range from like $14 to $20. And I'm in Canada, so I'm sure if you're in the States, you can find this for cheaper at the drugstore. Um, but I think I bought mine on sale at Shoppers Drug Mart for about $16, but it is cheaper at Walmart, but they just didn't have the shade that I wanted. The shade range of this product is definitely a pro. It has 36 shades. The only downside is that because it's from the drugstore, they typically don't have testers. So you're kind of guessing. And some of the shades, there's probably a whole row on the shelf that looks look exactly the same. So I went with 310 Butterscotch, which is kind of mid range. Um, there's definitely some shades that are deeper than this and definitely some that are lighter. I feel like I probably could have gotten a shade or two deeper or something a little bit more golden. I found that this one is a little bit light and also maybe a little bit more pink than it is warm or golden, but I can still make it work because I usually put powder and obviously all the other makeup that I put on top of it. This does claim to have a natural finish and also a medium coverage. Like I said, it has this anti-pollution claim to it, which um, I don't think any of my other foundations have that claim except for the Chantecaille Just Skin. Um, but whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's a claim that they have for this foundation. The only other thing I wanted to mention is actually you get less product in this than your typical foundation. So for the price point, which like I said, ranges from like 14 to maybe $20 here in Canada, you only get 0.75 fluid ounces or 22 milliliters. So your typical foundation is a fluid ounce and you get less of it in this guy. So that said, let's go to the application and wear test. Now I have applied the primer that I'm using today, which is the Tatcha Silk Canvas. And I actually just hit pan on this, which is kind of exciting. And now I'm gonna go in with the base. So this has a very lightweight consistency. So I don't have like a lot of stuff going on my skin right now. I do have kind of a dry patch here. It's like actually really a scab from a blemish. I didn't actually even touch this one and it's still scabbed over, which is super gross. And other than that, I just have like my usual hyperpigmentation redness going on. So this is again another tube pump hybrid packaging. This is one full pump and it is a bit of a more fluid base. This has a very similar consistency to the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. Um, so I'm just going to apply it onto the skin. This is actually a pretty good shade match. I like to use a sponge with this base. I find that um, a brush can sometimes leave uh, streaks. So I'm just gonna take this Real Techniques. Is this called the Miracle Complexion Sponge? I think it is. I'm wearing a white shirt today, so I don't really want to take this base all the way down the neck because I know it's not that transfer proof and I don't want it all over my collar. Okay, this is one layer of foundation. Now after one layer, it definitely has taken down the redness like around my nose and on my cheek area. You can still see a bit of the dark spots, but it has evened um, the complexion in terms of redness. So I will, for review purposes, just put on a little bit more um, in the areas where I do have hyperpigmentation and that's really just the cheek area. So we can see how that wears throughout the day. Okay, this is how the foundation looks with two layers in certain areas. And overall finish is quite nice. It is more of like a natural finish. Um, it doesn't look matte. It has a bit of shine to it in some areas, just kind of naturally where um, the light hits. Mm, it doesn't look matte whatsoever. Um, it doesn't look super dewy. So definitely I would classify it more as like a natural finish base. So let's just pause here for a second so I can just do the rest of my face. So this is the finished look. So for bronzer, I'm using the Marc Jacobs uh, Tantastic Bronzer. I don't have any highlighter on. I did just go in with a bit of the Glossé Wouder for the T-zone. Uh, blush is the Cheek to Chic Pillow Talk 
blush from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer under the eyes, of course. For lips, I'm using the Glossy Age NG Lipstick in Cake. And I'm trying to think what else. Um, I did bust out the Soft Glam Palette today. I'm wearing some falsies and I got a bit of the lash glue on my lid which I'm too lazy to clean off so we're just gonna work with it and then mascara I'm using the unlimited mascara from L'Oreal in the waterproof so that is what I'm wearing on my face right now in terms of the base everything applied on it really nicely um, I don't see any like creasing right now. I applied the powder on my T-zone and a bit under the eye So the shine has been taken down a little bit through there um, Overall again, it's just a really nice finish. It definitely covered all of the redness and Most of the hyperpigmentation you can still see a little bit peeking through But overall it did give my skin like a really nice more even looking finish So I will check back in later and we'll talk about how it wears throughout the day Okay, it's another overcast day, but I'm standing in front of the window just so you can see how the base looks. Um, very cohesive. Again, I've only been wearing this for about an hour now, so not a lot of shine has started to peek through yet. Everything still looks good. Makeup blended on top of it really nicely. It's also not fading or creasing in any areas yet. Hello, it is a little after eight now, and I've been wearing this makeup for eight and a half hours. And as you can see, I'm looking a bit shiny. So not a matte foundation, but doesn't claim to be. I would say that overall, makeup actually looks pretty good. So here's a little closer look at the skin. There was a little bit of creasing under the eyes, but nothing too significant, pretty easy to blend in. Other than the fact that I'm looking very shiny, um, the blush and the bronzer stayed intact pretty well. I was also wearing glasses, so there's a bit of uh, makeup kind of just pulling right here. Nothing too significant. No creasing in my fine lines, which is good. Overall, my skin doesn't feel dry. Um, it feels, it doesn't even actually feel that oily, but I can tell I am a bit shiny just by the fact that there's a lot of glare happening here. So we will do a blot test. So we have a sheet here and let's do the forehead. Very oily. So quite a bit of oil came off, but again, not too much transfer. Definitely not as much transfer as when I was wearing the Natasha Denona Glow. Uh, but overall, the wear of this base was pretty even. It wore in the usual spots, which is kind of around my nose, around my mouth. I did eat two meals since I first saw you guys this morning. So uh, yeah, I'm not really anticipating a lot of coverage around my mouth or my nose, but in terms of the cheek area, the blush and the bronzer, like I said, uh, adhered pretty nicely on, um, not too much fading. It actually still covers most of the redness, so that's good. The blotting definitely took away a lot of the shine, but overall still a pretty decent medium coverage. Okay, so let's summarize what I liked and disliked about this foundation. So pros, I really liked how it blended. It actually blends really nicely. Again, the shade range is really great, although it's really difficult to find your shade because, you know, drugstore products, so they're not really a lot of testers. I didn't find that there was any creasing with this product. And I also really liked the buildability of this product. So even though it claims to be a medium coverage, when you first apply it, it's definitely more of a light to medium coverage, but you can definitely build it to two layers to get that medium coverage if you want that. I also really liked how it wears pretty cohesively throughout the day, so I didn't find that only a specific area faded away or that it overly creased in a certain spot. Um, it wore pretty well all over the face. I do have a few cons about this product, and one is that it doesn't have any oil control properties, which it never claimed to, but I do sometimes look for that in a product just because I do have a more oily T-zone, so it's something that I, I would rather not do is 
um, blot throughout the day or touch up throughout the day. I already mentioned the other two cons, which is that it's hard to find your shade and also that it does transfer. So my final verdict on the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Foundation is definitely a buy. Um, you know, overall, the, I guess, pros away the cons. If you can find a good shade for you um, and you don't need necessarily a really good oil control foundation, this is a great kind of everyday product. Um, I prefer just to wear it with one layer and it wears well throughout the day and it doesn't crease. Um, it does transfer a little bit, but you can offset that with powder. And overall, it's just like a really nice kind of drugstore foundation. But again, you do get a little bit less product than your typical foundation and you are paying, you know, a little bit higher prices, I guess. Um, drugstore prices these days are kind of creeping up there, so I'm no longer surprised by it. But more of a premium for less product. So those are my thoughts. If you have tried this foundation, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.